Hey, what's up everyone? It's Franchise923, and for the past 20 or so days, I've been taking part in Techno Tim's 100 Day Home Lab Challenge. Now, one of the first things I did during this challenge was pick up this Juniper Managed Switch. So this is a Juniper EX2200 24T Managed Switch. Um, and yeah, I had always been interested in managed switches. Um, I've always used like those Linksys 5 port uh, gigabit switches, uh, unmanaged. Um, and never really knew what managed switches were or why you'd want to use them. Um, and yeah, I figured out how to hook this thing up, how to use VLANs and how I could um, configure it to talk to my Proxmox server. And basically all the VMs in my Proxmox server um, now can work within VLANs from this managed switch. Um, so yeah, the goal of this video is just to kind of go over the steps that I took to get that working. And I want to kind of make it from a perspective of someone who doesn't work with managed switches all the time because I don't. This is not my day job. I'm kind of just fiddling around, um, but I figured it would be helpful just to document the steps that I took um, and you know what what I did to get all this working um, to hopefully help somebody else out that you know just bought a, a Juniper switch. Um, and yeah, I mean that's the goal. So you know we're going to talk about how I restored this to factory defaults, um, how I had to flash this with OpenWRT. So this is my uh, TP-Link router. Um, I always used to just run it with the default TP-Link firmware that it came with, but that's kind of limited, especially when it comes to VLANs. Uh, so it was suggested to me to install OpenWRT in it or on it. So um, I did that and yeah. So if you're interested in learning more about how we can get this Juniper EX2200 managed switch working and configured, um, stay tuned and we'll um, dive in and I'll, I'll go over all the steps that I did. All right, so here's a more up-close view of the switch. Um, you can see there's 24 ports there. And we'll take a look at the back. All right, and here's the back of the switch. And you notice we have a management port and a console port. So the management port, that's going to allow you to access uh, a web interface for this managed switch. So, for example, you could plug an Ethernet cable into the management port and then plug the Ethernet cable into your computer or into a router and then browse to the IP address of your switch and log into the web interface. Now, if you don't know the credentials to log into the web interface, that's not gonna do you any good. So when I first got this, I got to the web interface but had no idea what credentials to put in and the defaults didn't seem to work. So I decided it would be better just to start, uh, start fresh and basically wipe it and set it back to factory defaults. Now, you can't do that from the web interface, or you might be able to, but I couldn't log in. So what I ended up having to do was connect on the console port, which gives you um, terminal access or shell access um, to the Juniper switch. And from there, I was able to basically Google what commands I needed to run um, to set it back to defaults. And then you're in control. You can set whatever password you want. And then when I used the management um, port for the web interface, I knew the credentials. Um, so yeah, that's what we're gonna be doing in the next uh, section. Just wanted to show you a up close video of what it looked like on the back. Uh, pretty simple. And yeah, that's it. All right, so before we go any further, I just wanted to do two things. First, um, just show you what we're working towards. And then second, I wanted to reset my router to default settings just so we can totally start from, uh, from the beginning. Um, so yeah, this is the Juniper web interface that I was talking about. So once we get this up and running, we'll be able to log into our switch through a browser, which is what I'm doing right here. Uh, it's a little slow because again, this is like 10, 10 year old hardware. So it's kind of um, sluggish to get into this interface, but it's not too bad. Um, and you know, an alternative to this would be using the command line interface, which would be faster, but um, for me, who doesn't use this stuff all the time, just using this GUI is good for me. Um, so I'll just give you a quick overview of what we have here. So we have a cool little um, graphic that shows what ports you have things plugged into. And we're gonna be working mostly over here with the interfaces and the switching. So if we go to switching and VLAN, this is basically gonna um, tell you, um, you know, show you all your VLANs. So we're gonna have to make a VLAN here eventually and if we go to the interfaces, this is where you basically assign a VLAN to a specific port. Uh, so that's what we're gonna be doing in the future too. Uh, but I just wanted to show you this before I uh, reset it all to defaults. So you can see here port uh, zero and one, they are associated with the VLAN four. 
Um, and those are the only ports that are active. So uh, I also wanted to show you before we um, basically reset everything, I wanted to show you Proxmox and just show you a demonstration of the VLANs in Proxmox. So if we look at the IP address currently of this machine, it's 192.168.0.169. And if we take a look at the hardware network configuration, you'll notice that no VLAN is assigned. So I'm gonna assign it to VLAN 4, which is one of the VLANs that we have here, VLAN 4. And I'm gonna go back to this, and we should see that the VLAN changes. Now I think I need to uh, disable and enable the network card. So let me re-enable that and give it a second until this goes away. All right, so see it's 192.168.0. Let's try this again. 192.168.4. So now we are on a totally separate VLAN. Uh, this VLAN is isolated, or, or this VM is isolated now to this uh, subnet. Um, and yeah, that, that was the whole goal. That was what I wanted to get working. So yeah, that's what I wanted to show you. And the final thing we'll do, I'm just going to wipe these settings in my router. So this is OpenWRT. All right, had caps locks on. Okay, so yeah, this is the router. It doesn't really matter what router software you're using. This is just a good free alternative. Um, so you're, you know, the steps that you might need to do might be slightly different, but the important part is making sure that there's, um, you, support for VLANs. So basically in OpenWRT, we have, uh, you know, these VLANs section, and I think in the network interfaces section, uh, we have an ability to add an interface for VLAN. Um, so you just need to make sure whatever router you're using supports VLANs. And, you know, the settings should be generally the same. Um, I think if you, you're able to follow along in this video, you'll be able to figure it out with whatever um, software you're using. And if not, see if you can install OpenWRT I'm not going to go over that in this video because uh, there's already a ton of videos on that. Um, but yeah, so let me real fast go and reset this so we can start from scratch. I already made a backup of the configuration files just in case um, I needed to reset it or restore it. Um, but yeah, let's reset to defaults. And I think what I'll do after resetting to defaults is just I'm going to set up the Wi-Fi just so I have some Wi-Fi in my house. Um, otherwise, I won't be able to search anything on the internet until I get this up. So uh, I think that's what I'll do in the remaining time in this video. All right, I'm going to give this a refresh. Okay, so eventually, whenever this boots back up, we'll be able to get to the login. So we're just going to pause the video here or fast forward, I guess. I'm going to leave it recording for now. Oh, you know what? I'm going to have to plug in an Ethernet cable into my computer. I was on Wi-Fi, um, but, you know, Wi-Fi isn't set up on my router anymore. So give me one second. I'm going to pl uh, physically plug in a Wi-Fi cable into my router, and I'll be back. All right. After that brief intermission, I've plugged in an uh, Ethernet cord from my router to my computer. So let me refresh this page now. And now it looks like we might be getting something. Nope. Maybe it's still booting up. Or, yeah, there we go. It, I remember I, I changed the um, default router interface IP address. All right, so now we are in. I believe by default there's no password, so let me try logging in. Okay, so there you go. This is totally um, set back to defaults. You'll notice my um, switch stuff isn't there. Or I think it comes with two by default. But yeah, these were here by default. Um, but if we look at our interfaces, um, you know, we're back to default. So let me go set a password real fast. If I can remember where we do that. Probably administration. Password set, let me just refresh this to get rid of this morning. And like I said, I'm gonna turn on the Wi-Fi real fast just so we have Wi-Fi in our house. Um, 
So the way you can do that, and again, this video is not on OpenWRT, but I might as well just explain it. So these two um, radios basically represent the 2.4 gigahertz and the 5 gigahertz uh, band. So for now, I'm just going to enable the 2.4 um, just because I don't feel like doing the other one real, real fast. Um, so let me edit one of these. And you can see this one's associated with the five and I don't want to do that one yet. So let me go to this one, which must be for the two. Uh, yep. Two, four, one, two megahertz. So access point, I'm going to change this. This is basically the SSID. I'm not sure what the E means. I always thought it was just SSID, but this is basically just the name of your Wi-Fi network. So I'm going to choose something like that. And all oh, this is good. Wireless security. Definitely turn this on before. Um, so I'm just going to put in a password here. And this is basically, you know, the password you want your Wi-Fi network to be. And let me save that. And in theory, we should start seeing some. Um, oh, I have to enable this as well. Uh, and I have to save it. All right, so I need to save and apply and then enable it probably. Unless this save might enable it, let's see. Okay, so let me enable this. And once it's working, I should see a bunch of devices automatically connect to it because um, the access point name I used is what all my devices in my house are looking for. So, just save that again all right is it working yet oh I, I used the wrong SSID all right let me go here real fast so my devices aren't connecting to this because they're not configured to. I forgot I put a two at the end of it. Like for example, my TV is looking for Norton underscore house underscore two. So there we go. So these, these are some smart plugs I think that automatically populated. All right, so yeah, this is effectively working. I should be able to on my Mac now connect to this Norton house. And once I do this, I should be able to unplug my Ethernet cable that I plug directly into the router. And we should be good to go for now. All right, so yeah, in the next video, we're actually going to take a look at how we can get into the Juniper OS or into the Juniper um, switch and how we can reset it to defaults. And yeah, we'll take it from there. Hey guys, just one last thing before we move on. So I want to change the default IP address and the default subnet of my router. So all my devices are on 192.168.0 because my, my Proxmox is currently configured on 192.168.0. So if I leave it as one, none of this is gonna work without um, messing with Proxmox and reconfiguring it. And I don't really wanna do that. So I'm just going to change the interface here uh, or the IP address. And you would think you'd be able to change it right here um, but I've had trouble with this and I did a little bit of research online and people are suggesting using SSH instead uh, to access the command line interface for the router. So I think what I'll do is try that. So I'm just going to, uh, in a terminal, connect to this um, router. So SS, SSH root at 192.168.1.1. Yes, and my password. All right, so now we're into the router. Uh, we've SSH'd into the router, and we need to edit a file. So I'm going to edit this file in Etsy. It's Etsy config network. And here's where we need to change that IP address. So config interface LAN. We're just going to change this to zero. And again, this isn't necessary for, for you. I'm just doing this to make my uh, life easier. All right, so we need to go into insert mode here and make that a zero. And then right quit. 
All right, and then the next step we're gonna do is just restart the service basically. So Etsy slash init D slash network restart. All right, so it's basically restarting some services on the router. And in a second, once this comes back, I'm going to browse to um, the router on a different page. So instead of one, it's gonna be on zero. So if I try this now, it's probably not gonna work. Yep, let's try it zero. So in a second, this will probably work. All right, there we go. So now we're in. Let's just make sure I can log in. And I'm just gonna check the interface to make sure it's the zero. Cool, and that's what I wanted to do. And one last thing, I'll just check to make sure my wireless devices are connecting. It looks like my Wi-Fi is reconnecting up here. Um, so yeah, that still has a one, but all these others are zeros. They're probably all slowly reconnecting. Um, cool, all right. Yeah, so that's what I want to do. Again, this is not completely necessary. I just did it because it made sense for me in, in, this, uh, in my uh, situation. All right. All right, guys, we are back with a little bit more equipment and we are going to continue where we left off earlier. So if you remember, we just configured this router uh, with OpenWRT and all that's going on here is we have the internet from um, the internet service provider coming in and we enabled Wi-Fi on it. Um, so there's nothing else going on with this router. Um, and yeah, the next thing we're going to do is actually turn on the switch. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do before I actually put the power plug in is I'm going to plug this ethernet cord into my router, into any of the ports that we have available here. And I'm going to plug this other end into the management port, which is right here. And in theory, this should let us access the web interface page. And yeah, let's just see what happens. So I'm going to plug this in and this takes about five minutes or so. So we're just going to let this boot up for about five minutes. And I'm going to pull up my router page. And the technique I use to identify the switch is basically, um, or identify what IP address this is, is I go on the router and look at the devices connected. And if any pop out, um, I usually try that IP address. Now, if you have way too many devices and that's not feasible, I'm going to show you um, in a couple minutes how we can actually use the console cable to get the MAC address of the switch and um, do it that way. But um, yeah, I just wanted to show you the exact steps that I did and some of the pitfalls that happened to me and um, you know how you can solve those problems. So yeah, let's just let this boot up and uh, we'll check back in a few minutes. All right, so let's go ahead and log into our router page. And we're going to see if we can identify what uh, IP address this switch might be. Um, and I just happen to know for a fact that mine is this 1.66. Um, if you're having trouble identifying what yours might be, um, I'm going to show you how we can identify the MAC address or get the MAC address of this, and then you'll be able to identify it a little bit easier. But this is just what I did first. Um, so the first thing I did was I grabbed this uh, new IP address that I wasn't familiar with and just brought it into a new tab. And this is going to bring up the web interface. Now, here's where I ran into the first problem I did not know the username or the password to log in. Uh, I googled that root might be the or is the default username and by default there's no password so I tried that uh, and sure enough that didn't work. Um, I also tried SSHing into this machine so instead of using the web interface I tried SSH uh, and this will be root at 192.168.0.166. And again, we're presented with, uh, we need to put in a password, and I didn't know that. So at this point, I was kind of stuck. I was um, trying to figure out how I could reset the root password. Um, so that is exactly what we're gonna do next. We're going to reset the root password. And in order to do that, this is where I learned um, you're going to need a console cable. 
So this is a console cable I got on Amazon for like $8. Uh, and it's actually console to USB. So you're able to just plug this right into a computer. So in my case, I'm going to plug it into this Mac. And I'm going to use uh, the terminal to actually make a connection directly to the switch. And from there, we're going to be able to do um, password resets and more, even more administrative tasks. Um, so with that said, let me go plug this into the console port, which is somewhere over here. All right, console port is plugged in. And now this is going to go right into my Mac. All right. So now I'm going to close this web interface because we can't do anything with it right now. And let's keep that minimized. All right, so let me close out of this. And how we're going to connect to this, we're going to use a built-in uh, terminal program called uh, Screen. So if you just type Screen, you'll see that it's actually this program that comes pre-installed. Um, so we need to say Screen and then slash dev slash tty dot and then hit Tab. And you'll see that there's three TTY devices and we're interested in that USB serial. And yours is gonna be different depending on what you plugged in, but the point is you should see a difference uh, in this TTY dot command um, when you plug, unplug and plug that back in. So if I ran this command before I plug this in, we wouldn't see the USB serial. So let me just type USB serial and hit enter. Spell screen wrong. A C R E N. And in theory, this should make a direct connection right to the switch. So there we go, we're, we're plugged into Big Fran EX2200 switch and the login. Uh, again, at this point, I did not know the login. So we need to actually restart the switch and we're going to have to sort of get into like a recovery rescue mode. Uh, and that's what I'm going to show you in the next section.